Hello, I'm Copy. You know, as in copyright. And I'm here to give you the latest on the copyright review live from Brussels. This time, let's talk about the wonderful world of science with a cool but scary sounding thing called text and data mining, or TDM if you're a geek like me. Today, research is based on exploring big, even enormous amounts of data. The human genome, cosmic microwave background noise, big data, and so many more fascinating things. Now, it's too much data to go through with plain old human eyes, so researchers put together tools called algorithms to do the digging for them, using their talent and creativity to put together these special mathematical tools to do the research for them. It's their secret recipe to finding new cures, inventing new things, data mining. Okay, sounds cool, very useful. So uh, wh what's the problem? Well, as is often the case with copyright, there ends up being a bit of a confusion that pops up between the common good and private interests, more specifically the interests of scientific publishers. <laughs> now, when we think of publishers, the model that usually comes to mind is, well, you've got one author, one book, and then plenty of readers. So, plenty of profit. But that's not the case in the scientific world. With science, things are always a bit more complicated. It's more of a situation of plenty of authors, one publication, and very few readers. Yeah, that's how science works. It's not really show business. In the scientific world, researchers are paid, in most cases, by universities. And if they want to keep their jobs, and hence their house, everyone likes having a house, their partner, their dog, their cat, all of these are good things, then they have to publish articles. It's publish or perish. And that's where scientific publishers step in in exchange for most, if not all, of the copyright of the research, they will publish an article without paying the researcher nor asking him for money to publish. Now, isn't this a clever deal? And once they've gathered all of that knowledge in a huge catalogue, guess who they sell access of that stuff to? Bingo! The universities, who already paid the researchers that were used to fill the catalogue in the first place. which creates a model that looks like this. I mean, isn't this... don't you find this a bit shocking? Well, you're not alone. A lot of scientists are trying to move things, change things a bit in order to stop this privatisation of knowledge. But let's get back to data mining. As a scientific publishers own the copyright to most of the knowledge contained in these published works, they consider how much access people get over their content, including if you want to mine it once you've paid for it. If you just want to read it with your eyes, that's probably fine, but oh, if you want to mine the data in this thing, then oh, well, maybe we'll tell you which tools you can use. It might cost you more to mine it than it would to read it, and uh, we might restrict how many pages that you can actually use algorithms on per day, and uh, maybe you can only read the text and you can't look at the images and the charts. Honestly, complete control freaks. Now, the EU Copyright Review urgently needs to curb this business of copyright that is smothering science. Copyright is a tool, not a goal. The goal is human knowledge and better access to this knowledge for everyone. In our next video, we'll talk about artists, industry, and copyright. The good, the bad, and the ugly. So subscribe, and don't miss out on the fun. Goodbye!